Well, to close technological innovation, now we move on with our program and now we will look at a very interesting project in Lyon, in France, the most important subway line where Dr. Karine Baplé will talk about this machine, the density variation TBM. I will uh, read Dr. Baplé, Head of Business of Techniques Consulting in Germany. Carlos Luge, sorry for that, Germany Today, KIT, Institute of, Te of Technology, and completed the postgraduate studies, studies with her PhD at the Colorado School of Mines in the USA. She joined Heronect in 1997, and since then has specialized in geotech geotechnology research and development. Since 2008, Karin has managed geotechnical and consulting department of the traffic tunneling division at Heronex head office in Schwanau, Germany, and is responsible as head of business development. She is an invited lecturer for postgraduate degrees at the universities in France, Germany, Italy, and the USA on the topic of tunneling and tunnel boring machines. So welcome, uh, Carrie. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you, Roberto, for the introduction. Um, uh, good uh, morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, here in Germany, it's already evening. Uh, I, I will present you within the next uh, 20 minutes um, uh, the project Lyon Metro Line B extension. Um, that's a project in Europe, in France where a variable density TBM was applied in quite demanding geological conditions. I structured my presentation as follows. After a brief introduction, I want to highlight on the subsurface conditions and uh, on, then on the TBM layout and, and the specific uh, project design features before I want to close then with uh, site experience and an outlook. So Lyon, uh, you see here on the map, you see the map of Europe. Uh, Lyon is an um, Eastern French city and uh, the current metro area population of Lyon is about uh, 1.7 million. Um, and the metro in Lyon uh, is uh, after Paris and Lille in France, the third largest metro in France. And with a um, uh, passenger share of 50%, it's uh, one of the important means of public transport uh, in the city of Lyon. You see here um, the line B and uh, the, um, the remaining section that was built as a 2.4 kilometer long Sorry new for, metro. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, Karin, can, can you put the presentation mode? Because we are only looking at the first. Uh, uh, OK. It's, it's, I have it already on. But I just. OK, now, on. now, now, we, now it's you just see? changed. Probably, you see it? Yes, uh, probably in presentation mode could be better. Uh, it's in, in presentation mode. Uh -huh. And uh, this is now without presentation mode. Do you see it? In the PowerPoint, uh, we, we, no. we, see, we don't see the presentation mode. Uh, we only see like, like your screen. Uh, oh, now it's, now it's the presentation mode. OK. okay. Uh, yes. uh -huh. uh, Okay, is it now better with this one? Or not? That one, yes, that, that button. That's mm -hmm. better. I think so. Okay, uh, so you see here the um, um, existing Metro Line B and uh, the section here of 2.4 kilometer long uh, section that was built using um, the variable density TBM. It's, uh, the tunnel is a single tube double track tunnel with an inner diameter of uh, 8.5 uh, meters. And here the main objectives um, of the project um, is here to extend uh, the existing line and to serve the area here in Olin uh, with about 4,000 uh, jobs. Um, and uh, it's thus one of the uh, strategic uh, projects uh, 
with regard to the city planning and to the future mobility of the city of Lyon. Um, the challenges of the project, um, you see here a plan view of the alignment. Um, the first section, um, the tunnel um, passes underneath almost rural area. In the second part, um, uh, you, uh, the machine passed beneath built up area with about one to two story buildings. And the remaining section was the most challenging one uh, in densely built up area. And here um, in particular, the tunnel runs beneath sensitive old buildings. Uh, with um, overburden of less than one diameter of uh, the tunnel. Um, the challenges of the projects are the diverse geological conditions um, and the overall um, geology here along the tunnel level, it's uh, predicted to be of uh, high heterogeneity of alluvial uh, deposits uh, of diverse mechanical properties and there is about a 230 meter long crystalline um, substratum that's a granite section uh, with uh, predicted um, unconfined compressive strengths of uh, up to 170 megapascal. So quite competent crystalline uh, rock section along the alignment. The majority here of the tunnel alignment is above the groundwater level um, and the soils, they are highly permeable uh, with K values in the range of uh, 10 minus four to 10 minus two meters per second. In particular here in the uh, pebbly and uh, sandy gravelly matrix. Um, the, uh, there is also, uh, there was the risk um, or the probability uh, to face here erratic uh, blocks during the TBM, TBM operation. And um, also the soils and the rock section here, uh, they were uh, classified um, as extremely abrasive. So therefore the key considerations uh, for the design and also for the TBM operation um, was focused on variable excavation conditions uh, for Face stability, but also muck handling and uh, discharge. So the contract here for the 2.4 kilometer long uh, Metro Line B extension, um, this uh, was um, contracted to the joint venture. This is composed of uh, the contractors in Polenia and the Mathieu Bar. And um, according to the predicted highly uh, complex geological conditions, the joint venture decided uh, to use a variable density machine for the uh, 2.4 kilometer long underground section. Um, and uh, the machine operated at four bar of pressure. You see here on the right hand side, uh, the variable density TBM um, that was used for the uh, project and its basic version here foresees a, a hydraulic marking of the um, uh, excavated material. Um, and the muck is always here extracted out of the pressurized chamber uh, through a screw conveyor uh, and passes um, at the end of the screw conveyor. Uh, the muck is passed into a so-called slurry fire box that is fitted with a jaw crusher and that uh, chow crusher processes uh, possible um, um, boulders to a transportable size, thus that you can hydraulically um, convey the material. Um, the challenges here um, to summarize, it's a high variation of alluvial um, soils of high permeability, um, quite abrasive nature of soils and the rock section. Uh, the, rock section with uh, full face um, um, granite and strands up to 170 megapascal. And the solutions on the TBM design is um, due to the high variation in ground. Uh, the choice was for a variable density TBM that you can also drive with uh, higher um, support uh, mediums with higher densities. Um, the abrasive nature and the rocks were dealt with 19 inch discarders 
a quite strong wear protection of the cutter head and the cutters and also a wear detection system on the machine and um, specific techniques such as cutter tool monitoring systems and also a seismic soft ground probing system uh, to detect the possible boulders about 40 meters ahead of the tunnel face. So if you look here on the cutter head design, um, the cutter um, head diameter um, was uh, 9.75 meters. Um, it's, um, uh, it was equipped here with 19 inch depth cutters um, to deal with the competent rocks and uh, also with the abrasive nature of the rock. Moreover, there had been um, the cutter head had been equipped uh, with 15 disc cutters that were instrumented with the so called disc cutter load monitoring system um, that I will explain in the next minutes. Um, the opening ratio of the cutter head was uh, 30 percent um, and the cutter head here was fitted, you see here, with calibration bars and these calibration bars, they are used uh, to limit the crane um, sizes uh, respectively here to control uh, the block size to enter into the cutter head. Um, the, this cutter load monitoring system. That's a specific design feature of the TBM. Um, and this uh, DCLM system, it's um, fitted to 15, 15 of the disc cutters. And um, it allows um, online load monitoring of the disc cutter, the data transfer to IPC in the control cabin, and um, also a real-time data analysis. So um, the this disc cutter load monitoring system, it measures here the loads uh, acting on the disc cutters. Um, and this allows um, that you can uh, draw conclusions about the condition of the tunnel phase. And um, thus, uh, you can optimize uh, your drive parameters. Um, the operator sees that picture that you see down here. Um, so the machine operator, he can. Uh, recognize in real time the critical disc cutter overloads um, that you see here with the different colors. Uh, overload here is indicated with the red color. Um, and um, it also enables to recognize unstable conditions at the tunnel phase. Um, and this year on the basis then on disc cutters under load. Um, another design feature um, of the machine is um, the possibility uh, of making the invisible uh, visible with the so-called seismic sonic soft ground probing system. Um, it's composed of um, two sources, um, uh, which are installed in the shield at about five and seven o'clock positions, and uh, three receivers that you see here. And uh, um, these three receivers they are pushed horizontally uh, through the excavation um, chamber and the stationary cutter head during standstill mode, of course, into the tunnel phase. And then two receiver cylinders um, that are regularly installed uh, in the shield, uh, they uh, record um, uh, the, the seismic reflect, uh, reflections. Um, so the Duration of such a measuring cycle um, takes about eight to 10 minutes. Uh, that's during ring building time. And um, so during each ring building phase, a signal is sent uh, from the transmitter um, that is positioned in this shield that you see here. Um, it's sent into the ground. And when hitting an anomaly, um, uh, then the waves get reflected and they are traveling backwards to the TBM and they are then detected uh, through these three receivers that are pushed into the geology and the driver uh, gets here through a 3D visualization software, uh, an indication of uh, possible boulders or um, cavities about uh, 40 meters ahead of the tunnel phase. Um, and yeah, to um, come to talk on the site experience, 
um, in July 2018, the owner with Sutral uh, um, awarded the contract um, to build this uh, metro line extension B in Lyon, um, the 2.4 kilometer long underground section um, to the joint venture um, of Implenia and Demathieu Bar. And then the machine was accepted uh, at Herringknecht's facilities in southwest part of Germany uh, by beginning of August uh, 2019. Um, factory acceptance test uh, was in August 2019. Then uh, the machine was disassembled in the factory and transported on the road to Lyon. The distance between uh, our facilities to the job site is about 500 kilometers. So uh, the equipment was transported uh, via trucks um, to Lyon. Um, and the cutter head uh, you see here it on, on, uh, on a, a wheel loader, um, it arrived on site end of August. And the TBM uh, started then tunneling end of November um, for the 2.4 kilometers um, and broke through uh, mid of May to uh, uh, 2021. Um, you see here on the right hand side of the picture, you see the starting shaft. The starting shaft um, had the dimension of uh, uh, 37 by 20 meters. Um, and um, the machine consisted of three backup uh, systems. The first backup was assembled also in the shaft and uh, backup two and three uh, were assembled on surface. And for the starting uh, procedure, um, it was connected with umbilical lines that you see here. Um, the overall, the total length of the TBM um, is about 120 meters, just to give you an indication. And then uh, the machine um, uh, operated at a very good performances um, of an average um, eight meters a day um, in quite uh, complex geology and achieved up to even 20 meters a day. Um, and um, to just also to give you an indication to operate such an uh, impressive machine um, there were five uh, teams of around 20 workers uh, that took uh, turns of 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And these 20 workers, they included the uh, machine driver, the pilot, um, conveyor belt operators, um, slurry treatment plant operators, uh, and, and also uh, the drivers for the logistics, uh, logistics uh, like segmental supply, uh, was realized with so-called multi-service vehicles. These are rubber tire uh, and state uh, vehicles and state-of-the-art technology for uh, supply logistics of uh, tunnel boring machine drives. If we look on the performance, um, uh, you see the starting was here on the right-hand side. Uh, the machine operated along the first, uh, in the first soft ground section, which is composed of silty sand and uh, gravelly sandy matrix. Um, it uh, achieved here average performances of 21 millimeters per minute uh, with penetration rates of um, 14 to 15 millimeters per revolution. And then for the hard rock machine, um, the penetration uh, rates in solid rock conditions um, with strengths up to 170 megapascal had been in the range of uh, 6.5 millimeters per revolution uh, with advanced rates in average here in that section of 19 millimeters per minute or uh, respectively 130 meters uh, per month. The most difficult section had been here the remaining uh, section underpassing um, all sensitive and historic buildings. Here also along that last stretch, um, the geology uh, was uh, characterized by quite high permeable pebbles uh, in a sandy clay matrix. And here also uh, with relatively low overburden of less than um, one diameter of the machine. Along that stretch, the machine operated uh, with uh, average performances of um, 22 uh, to 23 millimeters per minute 
um, respectively with up to 280 meters per month. Um, and um, to uh, conclude here, um, the uh, project in Lyon uh, for the Metro Line B extension, it's uh, part of an intelligent underground solution um, that will also enhance the mobility um, and the living uh, standard of the people living in Greater Lyon. Um, and it will also help to support uh, the sustainable urban development in the region. And um, the project um, is um, with focus on the quite uh, demanding, highly permeable subsurface conditions. Um, one of the few challenging uh, projects uh, that uh, were realized in, in urban area and um, the machine finally successfully excavated the 2.4 kilometers in May last year and sets with um, uh, a benchmark related to the TBM works uh, in quite difficult ground um, uh, with uh, focus here on the compact rock section, but also with focus in particularly on the highly permeable and abrasive soils and this above the groundwater table with the majority of the tunnel alignment. Um, with this, I'm at the end of, of the presentation and I'm happy to take your questions. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Karin. Really interesting uh, presentation. We still have uh, a few minutes uh, for some questions. We have a question from Angel Castro. How many maintenance interventions to the TBM were completed and how long did they last? Oh, real set, I, I don't have an, uh, that information on how many interventions they had to do, but um, they, they had to do it um, that the, the disc cutters, um, uh, the 19 inch disc cutters, um, they have a quite long lifetime um, and yeah, I have to ask back to the contractor on that because that's we are not operating the machines. Um, yeah, and okay. yeah, yeah, sorry. Any hyperbaric interventions? Or, or do you know um, yes, uh, the machine operated um, with pressurized conditions of four bars, so the people had to enter under, um, under four bars of pressure to do the, the um, tool change procedures, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, with a variable density machine, it it's, uh, can be compared. You have a bentonite suspension um, in the most sandy, uh, silty matrix. It was a normal bentonite suspension uh, with densities in the range of 1.2 tons per cubic meters. But in the remaining sections, in the highly permeable pebbly crown conditions, they had to use a special adapted um, high density slurry. Uh, and here you talk uh, on densities in the range of uh, 1.4 to 1.6 tons per cubic meters. Um, and so the intervention is, um, is um, done like with normal slurry shields um, that you have to lower than the, um, um, the level in the chamber and to do the hyperbaric interventions, yeah. All right, thank you. We have um, Marco Tapia with, with a question. Please go ahead, uh, Marco. Hi, thank you. Uh, have, you uh, have, have you any experience applying this technology in a smaller diameters? I mean, for micro tunnels in AVN machines? Um, in small diameters, uh, well, in in um, in micro tunnelings, the technology uh, the technology is advantageous because you can operate uh, normally in EPB mode, in slurry mode, and in high density slurry mode. Um, and if you have the full uh, design of a variable density machine. Um, it's, um, it consists of two material conveying systems. Uh, that means you, you can have parallel installed systems of hydraulic marking or conveyor belt marking. And with micro tunneling, you don't have the, the space available. So um, 
the, the limitations, I think in diameter, it's about uh, for variable density application with pure hydraulic marking system in the basic version as it was used in that project, I would say up to 4.8 meters, maybe um, with a variable density TPM application, yeah. All right. And you have uh, something else, Marco, because we, we have uh, one last question. No? Okay. Uh, the next one is from Eduardo Salgado. I'm going to try to translate. Uh, if, if there experience uh, any complications like uh, geological faults, uh, water filtrations, and what are the new tendency of instrumentation used on this project in Lyon? Finally, which are the principal innovations of this uh, tunnel boring machine? Well, the principal innovation of this tunnel boring machine um, here for Lyon in particular was um, that um, it was a variable density TBM that was used in quite high permeable soil conditions. That uh, That's the, the machine applications of variable density TPMs. There are more than 28 uh, projects already successfully completed, but none of the projects in the past uh, had these diverse geological conditions where they had really these high permeabilities. And in combination also with uh, relatively low overburden and beneath sensible structures. Um, the innovation here is uh, also the technology of that uh, seismic sonic soft ground probing system. Um, uh, that's a technology also developed in particular for EPP uh, machines. And uh, the technology uh, was used on, on, uh, on about uh, five other projects, on the projects up in for a rail shop in Switzerland. Um, and um, where it was a prototype version and for, for um, we had that same system then installed on the Paris Metro line 15 and 16 and uh, then in Lyon and now other applications uh, on um, two of our machines, one in Wuhan and the other one in Korea. So that's, uh, that's seismic sonic soft ground probing system. Um, it was an innovation and also part of a a specific project feature like I introduced was also the discarder load monitoring system that allows you also to draw these conclusions on on um, on the uh, conditions at the tunnel phase. Is, is oh. the answer, is that what you expected? I think so. The, the, the other question was if they were uh, going through faults uh, uh, faults or, or, or high uh, pressure water, no? No, they did. The tunnel alignment uh, was um, like I introduced in in the beginning. The the machine operated uh, along the majority, around ninety percent uh, above the groundwater table, um, and this was also a quite also demanding, um, uh, not below below the groundwater table. So then um, in these sections, when you operate above the groundwater table, you can also have uh, the, the bentonite suspension. If it's not the right quality of the suspension, you can have a high penetration in these, um, um, in these highly permeable soils. So there, um, the contractor uh, worked on a particular high density support medium uh, on a special um, uh, bentonite suspension to deal with these high permeabilities also. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Butler. I think we're out of time. Um, thank you.